Hey, I want to make a hopefully short video today about my new favorite thing in the entire world, the Pacific Razor Clam. Uh, it's no joke. Uh, we have been uh, going out every low tide, um, every every low tide series, about every two weeks, uh, digging clams since well since spring, and it's it's awesome. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the species and a little bit about how we get them. So enjoy. On the west coast of the Kenai Peninsula, there's a stretch of beach about 100 kilometers long, uh, which is pretty much one single, unbroken, flat, sandy beach. Uh, this is a, obviously um, a really popular place for clam digging. Uh, it's generally, in terms of invertebrate zoology or uh, whatever, it's got a very low diversity. Uh, there's not a whole lot there except for razor clams and a few of the things that eat them. Uh, one of the amazing things I, I found when we started digging clams is that the according to Alaska Department of Fish and Game, there are one million razor clams dug from the Kenai Peninsula, this stretch of beach, uh, every single year. Well, it's just pretty incredible. People come, you see, when we go down to the beach, I wish I would have gotten some photos of it, there are uh, campers and things parked for the low tide series. People will actually come from all over the state uh, and, and camp out for the entire tide series to dig clams. Uh, so this, the, the clam species we're talking about is called uh, the Pacific Razor Clam, Siliqua patula. Uh, there's another species, uh, this one here, which is the Arctic Razor Clam. Uh, these also occur here, although they're fairly uncommon in, in, in this area. They're a lot more common up north. This, this particular specimen is from Kulak Beach, uh, when I did my trip out to Adak Island uh, for a research project last summer. Uh, th that's the, the dominant species up in that part of the world. They're a little bit fatter, uh, a little bit uh, less less elongate shell. A few, few, there's a few other differences on the inside. Uh, these this group of clams these are uh, these are in a, a family called the Faridae, uh, but they're in a super family called the Solenoidea. Uh, that includes this the jackknife jackknife clam, uh, sorry Solensicarius, which we don't have here in Alaska. Uh, it, it, I'm not sure how far north it ranges. Um, but we used to get these fairly commonly down in Washington. And what makes this family uh, pretty unique uh, in the clam world is that they actually dig. Now, most clams can dig, uh, but they dig pretty slow. People, um, it's really a common thing for me to hear people talking about digging clams like butter clams or pink necks or um, any number of horse clams and make the claim that they had to dig really deep because the clam was digging fast. Um, and in, in reality, the clam is generally not moving. The clam is pretty much stuck where it's at. They can they can dig, like I said, very slowly. Um, but what it is, they extend their long siphons. This is a gooey duck here. You look at the siphon, uh, what they breathe through, can be long, and a gooey duck can be a meter deep. So they're at the surface. When you f first start digging, they're pulling that siphon down, and people assume that the clam is actually physically moving through the sand when the clam, in fact, gooey ducks really can't dig at all. Um, but this group of this uh, this solenoidea, this group are fast diggers. I mean, these guys can dig. Um, it's about it, it depends. It varies a lot, but a good average uh, rate of speed is about nine inches per minute, which doesn't sound that fast. Um, but when you're digging in pretty hard packed sand, it's it's hard to catch them. Um, so what we do is we use a clam gun, which is a type of a. a it, you'll, I'll, sh I'll show you the video. Here, here's a video clip of me using the clam gun. So you notice what you do is you push this into the sand all the way down, and then there's a hole on it. You have, there's a hole in the, in the handle to let air out. You put your thumb over that hole, and then you pull up as hard as you can, and that takes a plug of sand out. Um, now you put this over top of where you've seen a razor clam, what's called a razor clam dimple, um, and you push it down as far as you can. Sometimes you have to do it several times. Um, and in the whole time you're doing this, of course, the clam is pushing its way down into the sand as well. So it's trying to get away from you. Now, um, hopefully, if you've done this right, you pull up, and you know after one, two, or three different times of pulling sand out, uh, you'll actually have the clam in the in the plug of sand. Now, more often than not, at least not not so much anymore. But when we first started doing this, I lost the clam a lot. Um, even with digging as deep as this thing would go, the clam outdug me. Um, and this is where my little boy. Now, I learned my child. Um, Darwin is his name. You guys, a lot of you probably know that. Um, Darwin is a clam digging machine. Uh, I have no idea. I had no idea where this. It's. It, it, I think he was given a superpower, and it's clam digging. This kid, 
first of all, he never gives up on a clam. I mean, I, I would quit and leave the hole and go, well, this one got away, and he'd be like, no, it didn't, and he's down on his knees with his hands down in the hole, rummaging around with his fingers, and he would almost every single time pull a clam out, a hole that I'd given up on. Um, so we gave him the nickname the Clam Noodler, uh, which if you guys know about noodling, it, it, it's kind of a funny nickname. My wife started calling him that. And we have to literally drag this kid off the beach. He will not quit clam digging until the tide is too high uh, for the, to get any clams. I mean, he will not leave. Um, so here's a uh, here's a catch that we did one of the day. I went, we went out with my last time. We went out with my father-in-law. Um, that's my him on the left there, and we got uh, that day. We got 94 clams that day, which is pretty pretty amazing, but not even close to our limit. Our, the, the, we could have easily gotten our limit. The reason we didn't is we simply didn't need that many clams. Uh, the limit is 60 per person. So with the three of us there with our fishing licenses, my boy doesn't need a fishing license, but uh, we, that would have been 180 clams. So we got about half of our limit that day, um, and then that's just maybe an hour and a half's worth of digging. So it's pretty, pretty incredible. Um, and again, my little boy, he digs with a shovel. I can't dig him with a shovel. I can't dig fast enough. He is, he's just got it. It's amazing. Um, he, he, he's quite the wonder. Um, so one of the, after digging these clams, of course, the fun part is getting home and eating them. Um, here, uh, they've cleaned. That's the kind of, this is the pain in the ass part, of course, is cleaning them. They're a, a mess. Um, they're really hard to clean. You just, you, you just got to get all the sand and all the garbage out of them and everything like that. But once they're cleaned, uh, you get meat. It doesn't look so appetizing right here. In fact, it reminds me of something. I can't quite put my finger on what it reminds me of, but it reminds me of something. Um, and what I tried this time is we actually used uh, Deco Juicer's uh, chicken batter recipe that he for that he had posted on Godless Chick Godless Godless Chicken Godless Kitchen. Um, I'll I'll put a link to that video down there. Uh, we tried it. We thought just for sheeps and giggles, we'd try it with clams, and it was absolutely excellent. We usually use a um, a flour and um, uh, cornmeal, but we tried this recipe, and it was amazing. So uh, highly recommend that. Uh, go check out his video for the recipe. We've fried everything in it now, and it it works all the way around for just about anything you want to fry. So, all right, I think that's it. So take care. Thanks.